all right so there might be a two reasons why you are watching this video one you're wondering what happens or what are the policies um, when the doctors take a break from the clinical practice next you might have some uh, break in your clinical practice or a gaps or a clinical gaps in your practice so whether it's an internship gaps or a gaps or a break after the graduation the GMC has a specific guidelines to ensure the patient safety and maintain the professional standards so in this video we will dive into the GMC policies on the clinical practice gaps or a breaks from the clinical practice as well as the rules surrounding the breaks in the clinical practice after the graduation so let's dive into it we will divide the break in the clinical practice into two types one the break or the gap in the clinical practice during your intensive period and the break or the gaps in the clinical practice after you have graduated from the medical school so during the internship you should not be absent for more than 20 days for the sickness or other statutory reasons such as a maternity paternity or adoption in any 12 month period so basically you can take up to 20 days of your leave during the intensive period of one year and that is in addition to your annual leave which can be up to five weeks um, so basically during the first year of the internship or first 12 month of their internship you should not be absent for more than 20 days for sickness or any statutory reasons and that is in addition to your annual leave which can be up to five weeks and after the first year so any break before you return to the medical practice should not be longer than the 12 months and was authorized by the authority overseeing your training so basically for the first year you can take up to 20 days of the leave in addition to your annual leave and after the first year when you come back to your clinical practice the gap should not be more than 12 months so let's dive into the second categories of the break in the clinical practice so this is after you have graduated from the medical uh, school so uh, so this table has a very clear um, you know guidelines um, or uh, 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 basic guides for the decision making for the GMC so basically you can take a help of this table for example uh, you if you have graduated recently like let's say less than a six month and uh, the amount of the um, you know practice that is required uh, for uh, since the uh, graduation no practice required you can take the gap no issues um, and the the practice in the last 12 months required there is no requirement so similarly it's up to the two years after the six month you must be in full-time job for 60 percent of your time since the graduation and practice in the last 12 month required so basically no requirement of the practice in last 12 months and registration is granted so it will be clear when we take the third example that is if you have graduated uh, between two years and it is less than five years you must be in clinical practice for 60 percent of the time that is should be a full time job um, you can see it should be a full time job and the continuous practice so you must have a uh, have practiced for 60 percent of the time um, of above since you have graduated and out of which in last one year so by the time for example you have applied for the GMC registration in 2024 in last 12 month at least six months you must be in the practice so last six months you must be in a practice 
so then the registration will be granted so this table is the clear uh, guideline and it's given in the gmc website but anyway so the break in the clinical practice after the graduation there are factors that is considered by the gmc that includes you know the length of the break you have taken the reason of the break you have taken and the efforts during your break um, by you to keep yourself up to date and the relevant practice and during the break so there might be a possible uh, different outcomes uh, there might not be needed anything uh, or you know you might undergo for a period of the retraining or the supervised practice or there might be some restriction or condition during the registration or there might be a refusal so these are the possible four outcomes from my understanding and uh, you know anyway the importance of staying up to date is very important for the gmc and the patient safety as well so you know continue as uh, cpt points maintaining the skill and the knowledge and the patient safety and the professional standard and i hope that i've given you a very short insight um and an outline on breaking the clinical practice uh, before breaking the clinical practice during your internship and after the graduation and the requirements uh, for the gmc registration and also the factor considered by the gmc during the registration process and the possible outcomes so if you find this video insightful and helpful please share to your friends help me to grow this channel thank you so much for watching this video see you in the next video